We were eventually approached by the Khan family and they had a question for the three of us. The question was, do you guys really want to change the world? We said, yup. They said, we can help. So on January 1st on our hit YouTube series called Being the Elite, we announced our brand new promotion called All Elite Wrestling. For the past three and a half years, All Elite Wrestling would cement itself as a major alternative to the juggernaut known as the WWE. Something that no North American wrestling promotion has been able to achieve on a mass scale since the days of the Monday Night Wars. For a short period of time, AEW has built the most loyal fan base and has created some of the most memorable matches and events that have been considered the greatest in modern history. With already a massive catalog of AEW footage, it's certain that a few things have become obscure, unknown, or even never being brought up again. So tonight, I will be going through the AEW Iceberg. Special thanks to Sax0314 over on the AEW and Iceberg Charts subreddit for letting me use this iceberg. I will also be using a health meter from 0 to 10 to indicate my knowledge on the topic, with 0 hearts meaning I have no idea, to 10 hearts meaning I know exactly what I'm talking about. I won't be going fully in depth with every topic, but rather give a full synopsis of the topic with the major details because it's already going to be a long one. Before we begin, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel as we are so close to 100,000 subscribers. I also have a Patreon if you want to help support the channel. One last thing, if you want to see another wrestling iceberg, I do have the WWE iceberg if you want to see that. Link will be in the description, but that's enough of me, let's just jump right into the AEW iceberg. The Elite. The Elite are a wrestling stable of Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks that have been around since 2016, where they've wrestled in AAA, New Japan, Ring of Honor, and AEW. As of 2022, Adam Cole and Red Dragon are currently a part of the stable now called the Undisputed Elite, which is really cool. The Elite are also the executive vice presidents of All Elite Wrestling, which makes them the true OGs of the company. CM Punk's Return I remember this day as if it were yesterday. On July 28, 2021, AEW President Tony Khan would announce the second episode of Rampage would be titled The First Dance and take place at the United Center in Chicago, Illinois. I think you might know where this is going. Many speculated that this would be the date and time that CM Punk would return to wrestling, and by God, it did. And on August 20th, 2021, CM Punk would make his return to the ring in seven years to an explosive Chicago crowd. Just seeing CM Punk return made it such a surreal moment. It hasn't even been a year as of this recording and personally this has been the best run of CM Punk's career hands down. I also forgot to mention that they gave out free ice cream to everyone when the show ended so uh, yeah I got free ice cream. Take that. Dynamite. Dynamite is the weekly two hour flagship show for AEW. It's been airing every Wednesday since October of 2019 with over 140 episodes as of this recording. It used to air on TNT until being moved to its larger sister channel, TBS. Speaking of channels, TNT. Turner Network Television, or TNT for short, is an American cable channel owned by Warner Bros. Discovery. TNT focuses on airing dramas, the latest movies, the NBA, the NHL, March Madness, as well as professional wrestling. As previously mentioned, Dynamite used to air on TNT before being moved to TBS. TNT currently airs their quarterly TV specials, as well as Rampage, every Friday night at the early time of 10 p.m. Yeah, because I'm definitely not out doing anything other than enjoying life, but yeah. TBS. TBS, or the Turner Broadcasting System, is another channel owned by Warner Bros. Discovery that is like TNT except it focuses primarily on comedies rather than drama. TBS currently airs AEW Dynamite. I know I said that like three times, but I like ramming information into people's heads. Oh, did I mention that Dynamite airs on TV? Tony Khan. Tony Khan is the president and founder of AEW, as well as being co-owners of the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Fulham Football Club. Did I mention he owns Ring of Honor? Cause yeah, he does. Tony Khan is known for being an absolute wrestling nerd and just knows the business well that he knows how to put on a great show. Pay-per-views. AEW throws four pay-per-views every year. Revolution, Double or Nothing, All Out, and Full Gear. With having an extra pay-per-view this year being the Forbidden Door event with New Japan, 
Honestly, the pay-per-views always feel like a big deal. I always invite my friends over and we just have food and it's just a great time. These pay-per-views normally don't disappoint with All Out 2021 being considered the best pay-per-view ever, which is up for debate, but as someone who was there, it was truly amazing. Relationships with other companies. Over the years, AEW has had relationships with other wrestling promotions such as Ring of Honor, AAA, the National Wrestling Alliance, and New Japan. All relationships have been pretty beneficial to the promotion and hopefully WWE can be a team player and have a crossover event similar to Forbidden Door. ROH Ring of Honor is often regarded the largest independent wrestling promotion. It was home to many big stars such as CM Punk, Samoa Joe, Jay Lethal, Cesaro, Brian Danielson, Christopher Daniels, Seth Rollins, Kenny Omega, Adam Cole, Keith Lee. The list just goes on and on. You could basically say WWE and AEW are all ex-ROH stars. The Wednesday Night Wars the Wednesday Night Wars is about the time AEW went head-to-head -head with NXT. It lasted from October 2nd, 2019 to April 7th, 2021 with AEW picking up the victory at the end. It all started on July 24th when TNT announced Dynamite to premiere on Wednesday, October 2nd. A few weeks later, WWE would announce NXT would make the move to the USA Network on Wednesday, September 18th, giving the show a two-week head start in an attempt to take away the audience from AEW in a shady attempt for Warner Media not to renew the new promotion. However, around this time, interest for WWE was at an all-time low, and something new and exciting was something that the wrestling scene needed, and AEW would crush NXT in the ratings, eventually leading to NXT moving to Tuesday nights and ultimately getting a massive revamp that essentially killed the black and gold brand. AEW continues to air on Wednesday nights with the company having a TV deal until 2023, valued at around $45 million. WWE, come on, you're watching an AEW iceberg. I'm pretty sure everyone and their mother knows what WWE is. The WWE is the largest wrestling promotion in the world, founded in 1953 by Vince McMahon Sr. WWE is memorable for their household names such as Dwayne Johnson, John Cena, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Batista, The Undertaker, Triple H, and so many other names. With AEW being a competitor, WWE still remains to be the number one wrestling promotion. Ratings I don't know if this is a Twitter thing or just a niche thing, but ratings is referring to the number of viewers that watch wrestling. These numbers are often shared on Twitter by verified accounts and people seem to be curious how many people watch. For Dynamite, it's normally 800,000 to 1 million viewers, whereas WWE is more in the 1.5 to 2 million mark. Then there is the 18 to 49 demographic, which is something that people are more fixated on for some reason. This is mainly due to advertisers being more interested in that demographic. TV specials. AEW would often air TV specials of Dynamite with special titles such as Beach Break, St. Paddy's Day Slam, Grand Slam, Winter is Coming, as well as their quarterly specials titled Battle of the Belts. Licensed music. This might be referring to the amount of music AEW licenses for a certain talent, such as Jungle Boy having Tarzan Boy by Baltimore, Where Is My Mind by Pixies for Orange Cassidy, and Cult of Personality by Living Color for CM Punk. I think having licensed music is much better compared to having something generic. I think it just helps build character to the talent using it, but that's just my opinion. XWWE stars. This is something often phrased since AEW has been known for grabbing a lot of XWWE stars after being either released or having their contracts expired. This is often inaccurate since AEW has also grabbed talent from other promotions such as Impact, Ring of Honor, and New Japan. If you want to get technical, you could just say WWE is mostly X Ring of Honor and New Japan. Regardless, not everything has to revolve around WWE. Cody's departure. On February 15th, 2022, AEW had posted on Twitter that Cody and Brandy Rhodes had departed the company. At first, when he was claiming that he was a free agent, many believed that this was just a massive work, only for it to be legit. The reason toward his departure was due to both sides of the party not coming to terms on the contract. Supposedly, it said that Cody wanted more money, and basically that him and Tony Khan were drifting apart, but that he still has much respect for him and what he's doing. I would also believe his move to WWE was to prove himself and become WWE Champion, something that his father, the American Dream, wasn't able to do. All I have to say is, Cody should definitely go for it. If he believes he can be champion, I'd say do it, you know? Cody would make his grand return to WWE at night one of WrestleMania 38 to take on Seth parentheses freaking parentheses Rollins with Cody getting the win to an enormous pop. MJF's promos. MJF has to be one of the best heels in the industry today. He is well known for his top-notch mic skills along with his cynical personality. Anyone who has seen MJF on the mic knows that he knows how to piss off and work up a crowd. 
He never holds back and what he says often leaves him in a wave of booze. MJF is very valuable for AEW and if he goes to WWE once his contract is up, it would really be a massive loss for Tony Khan. Tribalism. Welcome Twitter user, feel free to leave your angry comment once you're done with this. Tribalism is the discourse between the fans that willingly defend certain promotion, whether bad or good. This has always been around for years, but on the age of Twitter, sometimes people can take it a bit too far. With AEW being a thing, it has opened the conversation on which promotion is better, and just scrolling through all of Twitter, it could just become an absolute dumpster fire. Whether it's AEW or WWE, both crowds are pretty bad. Botches. Botches in the wrestling term is when a move or a line doesn't go as intended, which can often lead to an awkward moment, severe injury, or even death. Just like any wrestling promotion, AEW has their fair share of botches. However, some of the botches that appear on AEW TV are pretty obvious and happen more often than they do on WWE. One botch that lives rent free in my head when Matt Seidel made his debut and did a shooting star press only to slip off the top rope. Luckily he was alright but looking back at it it was kind of funny. The Owen Hart Tournament The Owen Hart Tournament is a competition in partnership with the Owen Hart Foundation. It consists of two single elimination tournaments, one for women and one for men, with the winner receiving a trophy named the Owen. The tournament was made to honor the legacy of Owen Hart, who tragically died at the Over the Edge 1999 pay-per-view, where he fell 80 feet to his death. Brody Lee Jonathan Huber, also known as Brody Lee or as Luke Harper in WWE, was just simply a great man all around. He was well known as part of the Wyatt family and Bludgeon Brothers as Luke Harper from 2012 to 2019, where he would later go to AEW to be revealed as the Exalted One from the Dark Order and even have a run with the TNT Championship before losing it to Cody Rhodes in a dog collar match. This would be his final match as he would go on hiatus for an undisclosed injury. Tragically, just two months later, on December 26, 2020, John Huber would die of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. He was only 41. Four days later, AEW would make a special tribute episode to celebrate the life of Mr. Brody Lee, to which honestly made me cry. Rest in peace, Brody. We miss you. Forbidden Door. This can honestly mean two things. The first one is the term Forbidden Door. This means when someone from a rival promotion just shows up unexpectedly to another rival promotion. Such examples are like Medusa throwing away the WWF women's title on Monday Nitro or the multiple appearances of New Japan stars coming to AEW. The second one could be referring to the AEW New Japan cross promotion pay-per-view event Forbidden Door taking place at the United Center in Chicago, Illinois, where it is expected to be a sold out event, which I'm also attending. Kenny's Vertigo In a video done with Dr. Bo Hightower, Kenny Omega revealed that he was suffering with vertigo for around 3 years. Vertigo is a sensation that the environment around you is spinning in circles, which can make you feel dizzy and off balance. Kenny goes more into detail with his vertigo. I just get bad vertigo, I get dizzy in the ring and the room spins. It's been a new skill I've had to inherit is wrestling in a spinning ring. So to make sure I got that straightened out as much as I can, as often as I can, is paramount for my performances. There's a myriad of issues with professional wrestling and you can work as safely as you can, but you can't avoid everything. There's always something that can go wrong. I honestly wish Kenny Omega nothing but a speedy recovery. Jim Cornette I'm sure if you watch AEW or just a late wrestling fan, you may know who Jim Cornette is. He's been in the wrestling industry for over 40 years and the reason why he might be on this iceberg is due to his criticism on AEW. He has been labeled as a shock jock, someone who says bad things about the company to get the listeners to listen to his podcast, although slowly over time he has shown more praise towards some of the talent and booking. AEW console game AEW Fight Forever is an upcoming video game developed by Ukes, scheduled for a 2022 release for the PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series S, and X, and PC. Development for the game started in November 2020 and only a few clips and screenshots have been released. There have been some reports that AEW and Ukes have been butting heads behind the scenes and that this game might be a one and done for AEW. Unless they can fix the relationship, hopefully we can get an amazing game out of this. T-Shirt Company During the early days of AEW's founding, AEW was known as a t-shirt company due to the number of shirts that were sold at Hot Topic and Pro Wrestling Tees. Over the years, the t-shirt company phrase has slowly lost relevance as AEW was able to move past that. Revolution 2021 Botch at Revolution 2021, John Moxley took on Kenny Omega in an exploding barbed wire death match. At the end of the match, the ring was planned to explode at the end of the timer. However, things had malfunctioned and the ring did not explode. 
but rather sparklers went off and it pretty much ruined the illusion of the main event. On JR's podcast, he goes off claiming that they had practiced the spot several times and they had fire marshals and safety precautions ready, and that this was just a bad case of a malfunction. AEW tried their best out of a bad situation and said that Omega's plan all along was to embarrass John Moxley and Eddie Kingston, and he thinks it's hilarious that Kingston blacked out from an anxiety attack. The match in pay-per-view itself was great, but the ending kinda left it on a whimper. Eddie Kingston Eddie Kingston is currently signed with AEW and is often regarded as one of the best talents on the mic, who throws some of the most emotional and real promos on the show. Every time Eddie comes out, you know he's gonna say something great. BTE Being the Elite is a series on YouTube starring the Young Bucks that is more of a vlog and a way to further storylines on AEW. They usually upload pretty frequently with the channel having over half a million subscribers. In case you don't know, Brandon Cutler is often seen with a camera in the ring and the footage he takes is often added to BTE. Twitch Streams One thing AEW has been vocal about is that wrestlers are able to make money from their platforms such as Twitch, OnlyFans, and Cameo, whereas WWE is more strict and demand a cut from the talent who use such platforms. AEW has even jabbed at WWE when they allowed Kip Sabian to promote his Twitch on live TV with text saying, this message was approved by All Elite Wrestling on the bottom. Discover Merger In May 2021, it was announced that AT&T settled on a $43 billion deal to merge Warner Media with Discovery. Many fans, especially the anti-AEW crowd, assumed that this would be bad news for AEW and that they will cancel it. This was to be the case due to the 2001 merger of AOL Time Warner that essentially was the cause of WCW going down under. However, Warner Bros Discovery have been very happy with how AEW has been performing and even announced a new reality show in the works. So it may seem that Warner Bros has big plans for them. Hashtag speaking out. This was talked about in the previous iceberg so we'll talk about this quickly. The speaking out movement was a social media movement where many wrestlers and staff from several promotions came out and told their stories of emotional, physical, and sexual abuse. This affected the entire industry as many were either suspended or fired from their promotion. Former AEW star Jimmy Havoc would be one of those talents that was called out for emotional and verbal abuse by his former partner. Because of this, Havoc would be released in August of 2020. One-off guest appearances Just like WWE, AEW has too done one-off appearances with celebrities and legends such as one-off appearances including Juventu Guerrero who took on Chris Jericho in a match, Bret Hart unveiling the AEW Championship at Double or Nothing 2019, Gangrel, Greg Valentine, Mag Tyson, Shaq, the list just goes on. Eric Bischoff Just like Jim Cornette, Eric Bischoff is another name that has been in the industry for a long time. Eric Bischoff has appeared on AEW TV a handful of occasions in 2021. However, something must have soured their friendship between him and Tony Khan as Bischoff has not made another appearance on AEW and has rather made appearances for WWE. He believes that him being critical of AEW is the reason why he won't be invited. Quote, I have been beating this drum and this is one of the reasons why Tony probably thinks I am a pain in his ass at this point. I'll never get invited to another AEW event, which is okay. I am a little sad about that, but I get it. I don't take it personally. But I've been saying for over a year now that when it comes to AEW, and this is why I'm concerned about their dirt sheet booking approach, booking for the internet, if you will, is that if you're not growing, you're dying. Releases and Expirations Releases and Expirations is referring to a wrestler's status with the company ending. Compared to WWE's mass releases due to quote budget cuts, AEW instead waits till the contract is over and decides whether or not the contract is renewed. I think this is done mainly because, I don't know, it's ethical and that's just how contracts work. However, on some occasions, AEW does release talent if it is causing issues. Such examples of AEW talent getting released is Jimmy Havoc and Ivalice. Mikey Ruckus If you're not familiar with the behind the scenes producers of AEW, Mikey Ruckus is a music producer who has made most of the music for AEW. There's really not much I can add to that other than he has a YouTube channel where he uploads his music. AEW Elite GM AEW Elite General Manager is a mobile game developed by Crystallized Games released for Android and iOS that is a general manager simulation where you build your own league within AEW. In this game, you are responsible to book matches, run shows, generate revenue, build new fans, and keep the wrestlers' stamina and morale high. The game is free to play and is still getting updates. Bret Hart 
Bret Hart is a retired professional wrestler known for his time in the WWF during the New Generation era. I'm sure everyone knows his accolades and the infamous screw job, so we won't get into that. The reason for his inclusion in this iceberg is for his appearance at the inaugural Double or Nothing pay-per-view where he unveiled the new AEW title. Hart is also praised by multiple AEW talents such as FTR and CM Punk who have labeled him as one of their favorites of all time. AEW Casino Double or Nothing AEW Casino Double or Nothing is yet another mobile game, being the first game published by AEW Games where you can play roulette, slots, craps, and poker. Long story short, it's a casino app with AEW branding. Dark and Elevation AEW Dark and Elevation are shows on AEW's official YouTube that mainly exist to boost big stars in the ranking by giving them wins over local talent, as well as a place for mid and lower card talent to show off what they're made of. The Pandemic Era the Pandemic Era is about the time AEW hosted Dynamite and pay-per-views at Daily's Place from March 2020 to May 2021 due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. The shows often had little to no fans with AEW talent usually appearing by the guardrails making crowd noise. This was often considered a risky move for AEW since they haven't even been on the road for not even a year. Thankfully the fans stuck around and has helped AEW move past this financially difficult time. The pandemic era came to an end on May 30th, 2021 when Double or Nothing became the first AEW show to have full capacity. Paragon On January 3rd, 2022, a trademark was filed for Paragon. This was speculated that Paragon would be the stable name for Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish. It would have made more sense with O'Reilly name dropping Paragon in a promo with Adam Cole. Other than that, the trademark was never used, and the name Undisputed Elite would later be used to call the stable. This could have been a placeholder name until an actual name was finalized, but I really couldn't find anything on it. Lost Blood and Guts Match this is referring to the cancelled inaugural Blood and Guts match of the Inner Circle vs the Elite. The match was first announced on March 8th, 2020 where it would take place at the March 25th Dynamite at the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. However, just a week later, large gatherings would later be postponed and cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic becoming widespread leaving both AEW and WWE events to have little to no fans in the arena. AEW would make an announcement following the situation. We plan to continue answering that calling with live weekly shows every Wednesday night on TNT, but the time and circumstances aren't right for the card we had planned next week for Blood and Guts. That show will happen when the time is right. The match would never happen with the inner circle imploding and Cody drifting away from the elite. The first Blood and Guts match will take place on May 5th, 2021 in Jacksonville, Florida with the inner circle going against the pinnacle, with the pinnacle taking the victory. AEW stars in WWE 2K22 In the community creation section in WWE 2K22 where the downloaded custom superstars menu is, you'll see that most of the downloaded and upvoted stars are AEW stars like CM Punk, John Moxley, Adam Cole, Malachi Black, and the list goes on. You can also download custom arenas like AEW Dynamite and their pay-per-views. Pretty cool, it honestly feels like it's a modded game. Entrance Tunnels The two entrance tunnels are not just for show, but it also helps identify the good guy and the bad guy, with the teals coming from the left side and the baby faces coming from the right. Sometimes the hard camera is flipped on certain shows, which makes them come from the opposite direction. Lost Theme Songs Okay, so this is something rather interesting that I didn't know. There is an album by AEW called The Lost Themes. There isn't much information about it, but I'm guessing the music from this album are themes that were either temporary or never used because wow, these songs sound so generic and they just do not mesh with the talent. The notable ones that stood out for me was Jungle Boy and Sammy Guevara's original theme. I honestly forgot that Sammy used this song for the first ever Double or Nothing pay-per-view, but it's just so generic like Honestly an interesting listen, but yeah. Wrestler Vlogs Wrestler Vlogs are slice of life videos that are made by AEW talent and uploaded to their personal YouTube channel. You have b and Elite, Sammy Guevara Vlogs, Evil Luna Vlogs, BTS Vlog, Ethan Page, and several others. These are pretty cool if you want to get to know the talent a little more. CYN Control Your Narrative or CYN is a new wrestling promotion that is the brainchild of EC3. Following his release from WWE's budget cuts, he started making cinematic matches and started promoting shows using the CYN name. Wrestling Twitter often tends to meme on the promotion in an ironic way that it is much superior to WWE and AEW. Also they have a set of rules that you need to follow which is um, uh, yeah. 
Kendrick vs. Moxley On the February 2nd, 2022 episode of Dynamite, Brian Kendrick was set to debut and take on John Moxley. Kendrick's contract with WWE had recently expired and immediately Kendrick was scheduled to have a match on AEW TV. However, moments before this was set to take place, Kendrick would be pulled from the show after anti-Semitic comments have gone public. Kendrick would later be replaced with Wheeler Yuta taking on Moxley. The comments in question were controversial views on the Sandy Hook school shooting, 9-11, the Holocaust, and several other tragic events. Kendrick would later tweet out an apology stating that he had crossed the line and hasn't been seen on AEW TV since. Dark Side of the Ring Dark Side of the Ring is a documentary series produced by Vice that focuses on the more controversial subjects of wrestling, such as the Ben Wall tragedy, the death of Owen Hart, and the plane ride from hell. This might be on the iceberg because voices of AEW have been featured on Dark Side, such as Chris Jericho and Jim Ross. Either that, or it's talking about a promo package done by MJF hyping up the match with Wardlow. Regarding the series, it's really well documented, and if you want to know more about the controversial side of wrestling, I recommend watching it. Sans Undertale On the October 31st, 2019 episode of Dynamite, Kenny Omega came out dressed as Sans from Undertale with Megalovania playing as his theme. It was a pretty cool moment that I honestly popped for. Dark Order Extra Botch This is referring to the incident on the final Dynamite of 2019 where one of the Dark Order members were landing fake punches right in the center of the ring where everyone could see it. This would later be added as a segment where the Exalted One would want him out of the stable, to which they did in order to turn a negative into a positive. Sammy Guevara vs Matt Hardy This is a moment I think everyone wants to forget, but I'm just gonna tell you because it's on the iceberg. At All Out 2020, Sammy Guevara was to take on Matt Hardy in a broken rules match. This match is infamous for all the wrong reasons, mainly due to how poor it was managed after Matt Hardy got speared off a scissor lift where his head bounced off onto the concrete floor. Matt Hardy was clearly unable to compete following this nasty bump, but for some reason they cleared him to finish the match. This really sparked outrage from fans and critics, and it really overshadowed everything, making it the talking point of the entire event. Crowd Lighting and Motion Graphics Remember during the late 90s to mid 2000s where WWE had crowd lighting and did those motion graphics for upcoming matches? Ah, those were the times. Well, AEW listened to the fans after several people asked for it on Twitter, and now motion graphics are being used to promote Double or Nothing, as well as crowd lighting. So uh, yeah, let's complain to AEW about more stuff. Big Swole Controversy Okay, so I'm gonna be very careful with this topic because of how messy the situation got. On November 30th, 2021, Swole had announced her departure from AEW after deciding not to renew her contract. The two parties came to an agreement and all was said and done, right? 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 Oh, no. No, I didn't. On New Year's Eve 2021, Big Swole spoke on her call-in show where she criticized AEW for, quote, lack of structure and diversity. After Fightful News published the article of Big Swole, Tony Khan had tweeted, and I shit you not, he said, The top two AEW execs are Brown, me and Mega. Jade, Bowens, Caster, Dante, Nyla, Isaiah, and Mark Quinn all won on TV this month. The TBS tournament has been very diverse. I let Swole's contract expire as I felt her wrestling wasn't good enough. AEW Rampage Street Fight TONIGHT! This tweet divided the crowd on this matter. Many people found this to be racially insensitive, and others believed that Tony Khan was right and simply doing business. The truth of the matter is that while yes, during this time that it was discussed, it did seem like there was a diversity issue for black wrestlers, but as of this recording, AEW's champions have been very diverse, and it's really great that that has improved. However, I do think that it was wrong of Tony Khan to say her wrestling wasn't good enough. Like, while yes, she was green in the ring, I don't think it was necessary to go public on that. Sex sent me to the ER. This is referring to Darby Allen appearing on the 2013 TLC reality show Sex Sent Me to the ER, where a young Darby Allen talks about an experience where he got attacked by bees while having public sex with a cougar. On Chris Van Vliet's podcast, he tells him that the story was fabricated and that it never happened, rather he made the story up because it's reality TV, of course it's fake. During this time, Darby Allen was broke, working at a 99 cent store, spending only $10 a week on food, and basically appeared on the show to make some extra money. Who would have thought that in seven years he would be one of the most popular stars of AEW? 
Roads to the Top Season 2 Roads to the Top is a reality TV show that's followed the lives of Cody and Brandy Rhodes, as well as some behind the scenes stuff of AEW. The show ran for 6 episodes from September 29th to October 23rd, 2021. The show had considerable appeal to some fans and it looked like a season 2 was likely to happen with season 1 ending on a cliffhanger. However, TNT execs ended up cancelling the show, possibly due to low ratings or lack of interest. And with Cody no longer being in AEW, there is a 0% chance of season 2 ever happening. Deadlock PW Deadlock is a podcast and brand that reviews AEW that even had their own indie promotion that features AEW talent on occasion, such as Chaos Project, Matt Menard, and several others. The Nightmare Collective Storyline The Nightmare Collective Storyline is known as one of the worst storylines in AEW history. Brandy Rhodes seemed to be primed to become a big deal in the company as she was highlighted more during AEW's early days. However, Brandy's mic work might have been the catalyst for the storyline falling out of favor with the crowd as over time, her promo seemed a bit vague and gimmicky as she started adding dark and culty elements to the storyline, which could have worked but AEW already had the Dark Order doing that. And with the inclusions of Mel and Luther, it was just becoming a mess and AEW would decide to cut their losses by tossing the storyline away. Brandy Rhodes would later up a video to her Twitter burning her Nightmare Collective gear, signaling the end of the Nightmare Collective storyline. And it might have been for the best. Randy Orton Tease When Randy Orton's contract came up in 2019, he posted a picture of him in front of a door labeled Elite, teasing that he may jump ship to AEW. However, in November 2019, Randy Orton would let everyone know that he had reached a new contract with WWE for 5 more years. This image might have been a way to blackmail WWE to get more money, which, hey, more power to him. The Fiend the Fiend, or more specifically the man behind the character, Wyndham Rotunda, has been speculated to jump ship to AEW ever since its release in 2021. However, nothing has transpired since then and it is unknown whether or not he'll return to the ring. AJ Styles and the Good Brothers The Good Brothers, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson revealed on a podcast with the Young Bucks that the original plans of the ending for the first episode of Dynamite would be for AJ Styles and the Good Brothers to make a surprise debut at the end of the show. However, that never happened as the trio signed extensions to their contract and the plan just simply never happened. Toxic Attraction Toxic Attraction is a heel stable that is currently a part of the NXT 2.0 roster. Gigi Dolan of Toxic Attraction, also formerly known as Priscilla Kelly, wrestled for AEW a handful of times and was even married to Darby Allin for a while until they split. Nerd Signs Nerd Signs is referring to the signs that fans bring to AEW shows with video game and geek references with hot takes and opinions. Such examples are Persona 5 Sucks, Localized Mother 3, and my favorite, the worst Fire Emblem game is better than the best Paper Mario. WWE Standbot Theory In April 2022, Tony Khan made an insane tweet claiming that the anti-AEW crowd aren't real individuals, but rather, they are a staff running thousands of accounts, plus an army of bots to signal boost them. This got a huge reaction from the Twitter crowd, and personally, I don't believe that this is true. Well, maybe to an extent. Leo Rush Leo Rush's tenure in AEW has been strange to say the least. He debuted at Double or Nothing 2021 at the Casino Battle Royale before retiring from wrestling altogether. He then came out of retirement with a new gimmick as LBO Leo, which is like a gimmick based on the stock market or something. He then dropped the character and then formed a team with Dante Martin, but then Martin immediately turned on him to join Team Taz. But then he left Taz and then the whole thing really wouldn't reach a conclusion as Leo Rush would leave AEW again. Shit. Shit is often used in promos and segments on AEW TV mainly to give a more mature touch, where thanks to his TV 14 rating they're pretty much allowed to say it. Jeff Hardy release Jeff Hardy was released after a strange incident at a WWE house show where he exited through the fans. He was given a drug test but was then fired before he saw the results, which were apparently negative. He was then offered to come back and be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame but rejected it since he wanted to be inducted with his brother. However, Hardy was arrested for his third DUI and is currently in rehab. Honestly, at this point, it's unknown whether or not it was a good call that WWE had released him. 
Long Island. Long Island, New York is located at the southern part of New York to which has a population of 8 million. It is also the home to MJF and whenever AEW goes there, MJF is always given a hero's welcome. Ironically enough, CM Punk often gets booed out of the building mainly due to his disdain for MJF. EVP Heat. In May of 2021, there have been reports that the EVPs of AEW hated each other and that they were no longer on speaking terms. This all started during an episode of Jim Cornette's podcast where co-host Brian said that the Bucks and Kenny Omega are rumored to have some legit heat with Cody Rhodes, which would have explained his absence in being the elite. The Young Bucks would make a statement to the rumors by changing their bio to currently not on speaking terms as a way to jab the people who believed that the rumors were true. Tino Sabatelli Tino Sabatelli is a pro wrestler who was also a former NFL player from 2007 to 2011. He later worked for WWE from 2014 to 2020 where he would be released in April of that year. Three months later he would make his AEW debut at a dark taping teaming up with Brady Pierce taking on best friends. Sabatelli and Pierce would lose by pinfall and this would be his only match in AEW before signing back with WWE in October only to get released again in June of 2021. The reason why he is on this iceberg is due to some allegations that were brought up on Chris Jericho's podcast that a quote NXT reject was leaking spoilers for an AEW Dynamite show in 2020. Savatelli has denied that he was spoiling anything, claiming that he just isn't on social media and doesn't even know what a dirt sheet is. He believes it might have been another NXT talent. Regardless, it's believed that this just burned the bridge for an AEW return. Max Caster Suspension in August of 2021, Max Caster received a two-month suspension after one of his raps was poorly taken by the crowd for it being insensitive. The rap verse in question was, The acclaim kicking ass for miles make you claim mental health like Simone Biles. This line was taken negatively at the time because Simone Biles dropped out of the US Olympic team for the Tokyo Olympics after she wanted to focus on her mental health due to amount of pressure for being the face of the team. The verse itself rubbed people the wrong way on Twitter and AEW responded by suspending Max Caster. Personally, I think the rap was kind of tamed and I just think that the suspension was done just to avoid a PR nightmare. Longhorn Steakhouse Two days after Chris Jericho defeated Hangman Page to become the inaugural AEW Champion, it was reported by Tallahassee Police that Chris Jericho's championship had been stolen in his limousine while he was eating inside a Longhorn Steakhouse. Jericho would feature this on a storyline where he would launch a quote, worldwide investigation. Eventually the Tallahassee Police would find the title and all is well in the universe. Rick and Morty Crossover On the October 30th 2019 episode of Dynamite, to promote the fourth season of Rick and Morty, AEW did a match with best friends where they were dressed up as Rick and Morty taking on QT Marshall, John Silver, and Alex Reynolds. Just like the Undertale reference done on the same show, this was just another cool moment. Kip Sabian in the crowd Following Kip Sabian and Mira splitting up as a team, Kip started to wear a box on his head and if some of you may not notice, Kip Sabian is often sitting in the crowd by the ring keepers area and has been doing this for multiple occasions. I'm not sure if it's him or just someone else or both doing it, but I would say this is a really unique way to build a return, if it ever happens. Marty Skrull Okay, so trigger warning, this does have sensitive topics involving SA and a minor, so uh, bear with me or just skip to the time to get to the next topic. Okay. Marty Skrull was well known for his work in Ring of Honor as leader of Villain Enterprises as well as his match at All In with Kazuchika Okada. At the beginning of 2020, Skrull would re-sign with Ring of Honor instead of AEW who at the time was still in its infancy. The reason being that Skrull wanted to be head booker of ROH. However, this would all come crumbling down when in June of 2020, Marty Skrull would be accused of um having a sexual encounter with a 16 year old in the UK while both being intoxicated. This all came to light when the Speaking Out movement publicized lots of stories involving physical, emotional, and sexual abuse in the wrestling industry, and Skrull was one of those accusers. Ring of Honor would start an investigation, and in January of 2021, he and Ring of Honor would split ways. Skrull wouldn't be the only one from Ring of Honor who was called out for these allegations, as there was someone else. Jay Lethal Allegations Jay Lethal was another name that was thrown into the Speaking Out movement. In July 2020, former Ring of Honor Women's Champion Kelly Klein alleges that Lethal would sexually harass women multiple times and when women came forward with evidence, Ring of Honor would simply ignore and cover up the story. Lethal has since denied these allegations and not much has really been brought up since. 
Pam. Oh man, I really hate to bring this one up, but it's on the icebreak, so I have to bring it up. Pam is referring to Sammy Guevara's ex-girlfriend of eight years to whom he proposed to her during the commercial break on the August 18th, 2021 episode of Dynamite. Two months later, and it became knowledge that Sammy and Pam had called off the engagements. And on New Year's Day, it was revealed that Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti were officially a couple. It has been said that Ty Conti had no involvement with Sammy and Pam ending their relationship, but based on the timing, people just assumed that Ty was the cause. There's a lot more to mention, but I just really hate getting into people's lives, so I'm just gonna move on. FTR acronym. This is about the tag team of Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler on what the FTR acronym means. Well, based on a tweet from shopaew.com, FTR stands for F*** the rest, and on another tweet from Dax, he mentioned that FTR stands for Fear the Revolt, F*** the rest, and For the Revolution. The Revolt name being in reference to the original name of FTR going into AEW until the tag team duos of Caleb Conley and Zane Riley sent a cease and desist to FTR claiming that they had been using the Revolt name in the independence since 2015. Other sources claim that FTR also stands for Forever the Revival and Follow the Rules. And on BND Elite, an inside joke between Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks say that FTR stands for F*** the Revival. So just asking any FTR fan on what it stands for, it really depends on who you ask. Figure Thieves. Okay, so this is something I really didn't know was the thing until now, but supposedly there are scammers who go to stores to purchase a wrestling figure, often the rare ones, take them out of the packaging and replace them with an older one and return it to the stores without the employee knowing that it was actually stolen. I didn't know this was a thing, but it turns out that this is a bigger thing, not just with wrestling figures, but with people who collect toys and action figures. Pro Wrestling Tees Data Breach In December 2021, Pro Wrestling Tees had issued a statement that they were made of a data breach on November 1st. However, the breach actually occurred on April 1st, and around 31,000 customers were affected with their names and credit card numbers getting leaked. This honestly put the company in a really bad light for obvious reasons. However, I just hope no one got screwed from this, and hopefully this was all fixed. I should note out that not all websites affiliated with Pro Wrestling Tees was affected, such as Shop AEW and Pro Wrestling Crate. Rather, it was only the PWT website that was affected by the breach. Goldberg Rumors I think this is about the rumors happening in December 2021 that Goldberg would head to AEW after he finishes his last match on his contract. This was speculation considering Goldberg was one of the most popular wrestlers of WCW and with Sting there it would make a little more sense. But it's very unlikely that that would ever happen considering that he is one of WWE's special attractions. Personally, I think Goldberg needs to retire. Controversial take but you know honestly I'm over him. Cody leaving the Elite was never explained. This is referring to Cody never explaining why he left the Elite in 2020. What ended up happening is that Cody simply left and focused on the Nightmare Family next week. I'm not entirely sure on why he left, but if my memory is correct, this was around the time Kenny Omega and Adam Page had a fallout, which led to the entire Elite just disbanding. I'm probably wrong on that, but I think that's what happened because like I said this was just never explained. If someone knows the answer on why, please feel free to comment down, I'd really like to know. Original Exalted One On Chris Van Vliet's podcast, John Silver had revealed that Matt Hardy was going to be the original leader of the Dark Order. Quote, Initially, they told us there is going to be an Exalted One and he is going to be your leader. Originally, I think the first one was Matt Hardy. The broken Matt Hardy gimmick. I thought it was really cool because we had some ideas that we can get like thousands of people in mask doing something in compound or something. I thought it sounded amazing and it was really cool. That was the first name that we were told. Pillman Jr. Heat. Brian Pillman Jr. has tweeted some pretty strange things in the past. One of which where he tweeted about a Starbucks mask mandate and cancel culture which led to a funny response from CM Punk saying, Is this cancel culture? To which Pillman Jr. deleted moments after. Pre-Dynamite era, before Dynamite made its weekly debut, AEW hosted four events, that being Double or Nothing, Fighter Fest, Fight for the Fallen, and All Out. Other than these main events and the YouTube channel, this was the only way for storylines to progress while a TV deal was finalized. Colt Cabana vs CM Punk CM Punk and Colt Cabana were once good friends. Were. Following Punk's civil lawsuit against WWE's Dr. Chris Amon, Cabana and Punk had a falling out with Cabana claiming that CM Punk offered to pay his legal fees during the Amon lawsuit and that he and Punk had a verbal contract. Punk would fire back saying that Cabana was greedy and alleges that he tried to extort him. The two haven't been on speaking terms since and since his debut on AEW, Cabana hasn't been seen on AEW TV. Not even with the Dark Order. 
Excalibur vs. Jimmy Havoc Following an AEW show in 2019 at a seafood restaurant to celebrate Tony Schiavone's birthday, a drunken Jimmy Havoc got in a brawl with Excalibur where he would throw a punch at Excalibur only to miss and put Havoc in a chokehold. Havoc was escorted out of the building and Excalibur went outside to talk everything out. However, he was still upset and threw his cell phone at Excalibur. Tony Khan was at the restaurant at the time of the fight with him telling reporters that it really wasn't much of a fight and rather he's seen worse in NFL and soccer games. Christmas Story Retold In December 2020, TNT and TBS presented a 24-hour marathon of the 1983 classic movie, A Christmas Story, where AEW reenacted several scenes of the movie to air during commercial breaks, with MJF playing the main role of Ralphie, Cody and Brandy Rhodes as Mr. and Mrs. Parker, Ricky Starks as the bully Farkas, Chris Jericho as Santa, and several other roles played by other AEW talent, along with Tony Schiavone and Jim Ross being narrators. This was an attempt to raise funds for their nonprofit partner, Culture City, who works towards people with sensory issues, including disabilities like PTSD, dementia, and autism. So for them to do this was just really awesome. Pineapple Pete Shug D, also known as Pineapple Pete, was an extra who was well known for his strange feud with Chris Jericho during the early pandemic era. Jericho would try to humiliate Pineapple Pete by calling him stupid on commentary. This feud gave a rub on Shugdi, and right now he's currently wrestling in the indies. Wrestlers cut from the AEW GM game. Danny Limelight was in the AEW GM game beta, but was later removed. No other wrestlers have been removed, such as Cody, Brandy, Leo Rush, and Big Swole, as they still remain in the game. Harold from Anger Management Harold from Anger Management is a character seen during the segments where Daniel Bryan and Kane are taking anger management classes. If you haven't noticed it by now, Harold is played by none other than TNT champion Scorpio Sky, who was 29 at the time. PBR Commercial I honestly feel like this was done out of spite on AEW's end, but this is still a funny story nevertheless. This all started on the August 28th, 2021 episode of Dynamite, where in the main event, Chris Jericho was to take on GCW star Nick Gage as part of the five laborers of Jericho in a bloody no disqualification match. However, as the match was going into picture in picture, Nick Gage used a pizza cutter and opened up Jericho. And just when it went into picture in picture in a wrong place at the wrong time type of situation, a Domino's ad starts playing with a pizza cutter being used. The execs at Domino's were not pleased and said in a statement that they would be quote, assessing our advertising presence. This is where PBR comes in. After the news breaks that Domino's was threatening to pull their advertising, PBR on Twitter was asking for the open slots. And just a week later, PBR aired a commercial featuring Matt Cardona, Brian Myers, Smart Mark Sterling, Swoggle, and Chelsea Green. Getting wasted and having an awesome pool party. Sounds like a good time. You can watch this commercial on the PBR official YouTube channel. The Hogan's are banned. The Hogan's Aren't Banned is about the fact that both Hulk Hogan and his ex-wife Linda Hogan are blacklisted from ever appearing on AEW television. This came to light after Linda posted a tweet criticizing those protesting the death of George Floyd with just a really bad racist tweet. Before deleting the tweet, Tony Khan responded with, You've now joined your husband in being banned from all AEW shows. Congratulations. Tony Gunn has also gone on record to say that Hulk Hogan being banned was a decision made a long time ago because of his racist sex tape scandal. Quote, What he said on the tape, long before George Floyd, I've told people I can't work with Hulk Hogan. How can I look my black friends, football players, employees in the face or myself in the mirror after the things he said and has never given an adequate apology for? He can't blame what he said on tape on the dangers of social media. Dark Order 8 and 9 Dark Order members 8 and 9 are members of the Dark Order that were either removed or changed. Dark Order member number 8 would make a single appearance on the April 1st, 2020 episode of Dynamite where he would later be repackaged as Alan Angels or number 5 of the Dark Order. Number 9 of the Dark Order is a different story however, as a number 9 of the Dark Order was never finalized. From what I could gather, it seemed like number 9 was played by two people, with Brandon Cutler being the second. As for the first person who played number 9, it is unconfirmed, although a few comments alongside IMDB say that Canadian wrestler Kennedy Kendrick was the first person to play 9. According to IMDB, Kennedy has also played minor roles in WWE television too, so for someone to fill in a temporary role doesn't seem out of the ordinary. 
All Out 2019 Entrance Botch. Ah, oh my god, yeah. Uh, this is something that AEW and Cody probably want you to forget. At All Out 2019, Cody, Brandy, Diamond Dallas Page, MJF, and his Pooch Pharaoh were at ringside to take on Sean Spears with Tully Blanchard. Man, things were really different back then. Anyways, as Cody's entrance was happening, Pharaoh, Cody's doggo, was scared shitless because, you know, I, I don't know, a uh, flaming pyro was several feet away from him and it just made the whole situation awkward just seeing Pharaoh have a mini freak out. After this incident, Pharaoh has never been used again for an entrance. Satnam Singh YouTube Views. I'm not 100% sure on what this is talking about, but I believe it's referring to the number of views Satnam Singh gets compared to other videos when he is featured. People believe that since Singh is of Indian descent, more Indian viewers are watching as India is a massive market for professional wrestling. It could be suggested that this is AEW's answer for trying to attract the Indian market. And if that's the case, then Satnam Singh is the true needle mover. AEW saved WWE from a lawsuit. I think this is about the lawsuit Major League Wrestling put against WWE. WWE citing that they got their Tubi deal cancelled because of WWE being on Fox and Fox owning Tubi, as well as ongoing attempts to undermine competition in and monopolize the professional wrestling market by interfering with MLW's contracts and business prospects. WWE would file a motion to dismiss the trial claiming that AEW's success is proof that there isn't a monopoly in the business. Quote, AEW's success further undercuts MLW's unsupported assertion that the substantial barriers to entry exist. The complaint alleges that WWE's popularity has declined over the last five years. It goes on to say that, during the same period, AEW entered the market and successfully sold broadcast rights to Warner Media. Subsequently, AEW managed to capture an average 2020 rating of 0.34 compared to WWE Raw's 0.51 in the key 18-49 demo. This successful entry and expansion refutes to the existence of a substantial barrier to entry. This essentially does mean that AEW's success did save WWE from a lawsuit. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Jack Evans Travel Issues Jack Evans Travel Issues, I believe it's about the trouble with Del Valle Police in Mexico City on December 2021 where two cops extorted him for 7,000 pesos or $350 in a period of four days and has gone on record claiming that if he does get arrested it's because police planted drugs on him. He had since filed an official complaint against the police for corruption. I'm guessing it was this period that had him off TV for about a month. January 6th. Everyone here remembers January 6th, the day the attack on the US Capitol happened. Why it's on this iceberg is beyond me. It might be for this tweet by Cody saying January 6th as big as it gets or how fans online were calling out Chris Jericho's wife for being at the Capitol on the day of. Maybe it's because Dynamite and NXT were both sucking on the ratings because of the primetime news talking about the insurrection. I'm honestly not so sure. Twitter account hacks. On July 15, 2020, around 130 Twitter accounts from verified accounts such as Apple, Barack Obama, and Bill Gates were all hacked and sent out a tweet to donate to a Bitcoin wallet for COVID relief funds so that they would double it. This turned out to be a fraud and over $110,000 were stolen because of the hack. The reason why this is on the iceberg is because it was on a Wednesday and you know what that means. Twitter had frozen verified accounts from tweeting so that they could fix the issue, meaning that both AEW and WWE's accounts couldn't tweet. So they had to create temporary accounts. WWE had temporarily created an account called at temp WWE NXT and AEW had a temporary account that no longer exists. Luther Fandom. I'm not exactly sure on what this is referring, so I asked the creator of the iceberg and he replied to me saying, Basically, Luther has this semi ironic fan base online due to his strange debut, position on the card, and a genuine respect for his work over the years. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's good to know. Hey, Luther, you are right. CM Punk at indie shows prior to his return. Before CM Punk made his return to professional wrestling, he made two appearances at indie shows. His first sighting was at a 2015 freelance show where Punk dr was draped in a cloak and tossed around salt before the match. He was referred to as the nameless mentor to Kiki Taru. 
I, I think that's how you pronounce the name. Anyways, his second appearance would be at a 2019 MKE show where he helped Ace Steel in a match by performing his go to sleep finisher on his opponent. This time Punk was in a mask. Although the owner of MKE has claimed that it was Punk in the mask, Punk has yet to confirm nor deny the rumors. Evil Danhausen. Before the very nice, very evil Danhausen we all got to know and love, the origins of Danhausen were, well, unsettling to say the least. In 2018, when the Danhausen character was first introduced, he was to be this more serious and disturbing type of person. His vignettes had a darker horror theme with disturbing and unsettling scenes such as him typing I will not be ignored on a typewriter, watching a static TV in the dark, and just laying on the floor covered in bags. This video honestly gave a found footage ARG type of vibe that had the horror genre feel to it, something that he had loved since he was a kid. In 2019, Danhausen started adding a more comedic side to him, stating that he believed that his character had reached its ceiling, with the horror genre being more for a niche audience. He got inspiration from the 2000 film Shadow of the Vampire, which is like a movie based on a movie based on the 1922 film Nosferatu, in where William Dafoe plays Max Schreck in which he believes he is a vampire. Which is honestly a pretty good choice for inspiration. This added the very nice persona of Danhausen to his character in which made him more popular with the crowd. Chris Van Vliet and Chris Jericho have done a podcast with Danhausen where he goes more in depth with his character. It's honestly worth a listen and more interesting than I'm making it out to be. Lost and unreal release media now, you wouldn't expect AEW to not have any lost or unreleased media, but you'd be surprised that there is. AEW has some unreleased media, such as their first house show, The House Always Wins, that took place in April of 2021, as well as the second Jericho Cruise not having any official footage. I guess you can also include injuries from AEW Dark that were caught on tape that eventually never got aired. This is pretty much all I could gather from this topic. It's unclear whether there's more unreleased footage from 2020, as most footage was all pre taped because of the COVID-19 outbreak, but that's all I really know. Tony Khan had been planning Dynamite before it was founded. Here to end off this iceberg is something really wholesome. This entry is referring to how Tony Khan end up with the name Dynamite for their flagship show. According to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, they reveal how the name Dynamite came to be. Regarding the name AEW Dynamite, like the original Tuesday Night Dynamite in the trivia note, Khan as a kid used to book pro wrestling television and the name Dynamite was the name of his fantasy television show he put together, so that's the actual origination of that name. Moral of the story, follow your dreams, be passionate, and maybe soon you'll run the second biggest wrestling show. And there you have it guys, that was the AEW Iceberg. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, maybe learned a thing or two. Uh, I've honestly been waiting to make this video for such a long time. Just getting an opportunity to talk well in depth about AEW is something that I've wanted to do since I started this channel, and I finally did it. I do apologize for taking a while making this video. I'm currently taking college classes for the summer, and it really did slow down progress for this video to get finished, but it's finally done. Thanks to everyone who finally made it to the end. It really means a lot, guys. Uh, I'm pretty much going to leave it at that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you guys have an idea for a video, feel free to ask me on Twitter. But yeah, that's enough of me. My name is Lewis, and I am out. <laughs>